This quantum computer is too powerful. Let's see how it works. Hello world, it's Siraj, and anyone who has a laptop and an internet connection can now use a quantum computer to submit and run applications, receiving solutions in seconds. D-Wave's Leap service is the first cloud-based quantum application environment that gives developers real-time access to a live quantum computer. In this video, we'll use the Leap service to build a simple application to monitor a crop health sensor network. Quantum computing is already being applied to early real-world applications. Volkswagen, for example, first used data from 418 taxis in Beijing to see how well a quantum computer could optimize the travel time of taxis in the city. Based on that success, VW has stated that they are working on putting their algorithm to use commercially for traffic management in Lisbon. Recruit Communications applied it to optimize the efficiency of matching advertisements to customers for web advertising and recently announced they could increase sales using a quantum algorithm. From cryptography to medicine to financial markets, Quantum computing can be applied to almost every industry to solve real problems. Quantum mechanics is the body of scientific laws that describe the motion and interaction of photons, electrons, and other subatomic particles that make up our universe. Quantum computers exploit the rules of quantum mechanics to solve problems. And these rules are hard for us to conceptualize because they're so different than what we're used to. Let's say we flip the coin. We know what will happen. It'll go up, it, then down, and land on heads or tails. These are all single truths. But if we shrunk down to the subatomic level and again flip the coin, there would be multiple truths. The coin would be in both heads and tails simultaneously in the air. It could be 60% heads and 40% tails, for example, simultaneously. And it would stay in midair until it's observed by some measuring device, be it a human or a machine. Pretty wild, right? To quote Dr. Feynman, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. Quantum computing exploits three key features of quantum mechanics for computing, superposition, entanglement, and quantum tunneling. Particles can exist across all possible states simultaneously, and this is known as a superposition of states. An electron, for example, may exist in two possible spin states, usually referred to as spin up and spin down, simultaneously. And sometimes groups of particles interact in ways such that the quantum state of each particle cannot be described independently of the state of the others, even when the particles are separated by a large distance. This is called entanglement. And quantum tunneling helps quantum computers explore the space of all possible solutions to a problem, which can be thought of as low-lying points in a mountainous terrain by drilling through all the mountains simultaneously rather than having to go over them. D-Wave invited me to Vancouver to see their quantum computer in person, and it was an incredible experience. I saw that while a classical computer uses bits to perform computation, their quantum machine uses qubits. So instead of taking on the value of either zero or one, it can take on both at the same time in a superimposed state. And these qubits can be entangled with each other to compute huge amounts of data and solve certain complex problems that would take classical computers millions of years to calculate. The way this is done is not by using what we're used to, the classical CMOS or complementary metal oxide semiconductor transistor, but instead what's called a SQUID or superconducting quantum interference device, aka quantum transistors. Instead of using silicon, it uses a metal called niobium that when cooled below negative 264 degrees Celsius becomes a superconductor and starts to exhibit quantum mechanical effects. While a regular transistor only lets us encode two different states using voltages, a qubit can encode two states as tiny magnetic fields that can point up or down simultaneously. Couplers connect qubits together such that they can exchange information easily. 
As amazing as quantum machines are, let's be clear, they are not a replacement for classical computers. Instead, they're complementary. For a subset of classical problems, quantum computing will make a dramatic difference. We can in fact think of the quantum computation process as engineering the pattern of a complex set of waves in hope of channeling the flow towards the correct answer. So let's take a look at the Leap service firsthand to see what it offers us. We can sign up for an account on the landing page, then we'll be able to access the dashboard. Here we can see how much time we have to use the quantum processing unit, or QPU. It doesn't seem like a lot of time, but it is, because quantum computers are so fast. They can perform computations in just milliseconds. There are a whole host of learning materials on this dashboard, including educational videos, research publications, and real-world case studies that show how their clients have used their quantum computer to solve customer problems. The Community Support tab also leads to access to their technical forums that allow developers to share and learn about quantum computing. My favorite part of the dashboard are the interactive demos that can be viewed in the browser to learn more about specific use cases, as well as Jupyter Notebooks that demonstrate different quantum algorithms in the cloud. The Ocean SDK is D-Wave's Python library that wraps the API and lets us access the QPU in a simple three-step process. After installing it using the pop popular pip installer, we just set our API token and we can verify our connection to the QPU with the dwave ping command. So for our use case, imagine we're a software as a service startup that creates custom sensor networks for farmers so that they get crop information in real time, allowing them to make smarter decisions. We can build a network of devices that can sense water quality, air pollution, crop health, and more. Then we'll want to create a security system that ensures that this system is not compromised by a third party and the data stolen. We'll want to monitor network traffic as it moves between all of our routers. We could place a traffic monitor on every single device in our network, but that would be an expensive hardware cost. Instead, what if we placed network traffic sensors in the minimum amount of spots necessary, such that the sensors are still able to monitor all traffic in the network? We can consider this a graph problem. Nodes are sensor outposts, full of different equipment, and the edges represent all the paths that data flows through between these nodes. We're trying to find what's called the minimum vertex cover. A vertex cover is a set of vertices such that each edge of the graph is incident with at least one vertex in the set. A minimum vertex cover, then, is the vertex cover of smallest size. Let's open our own cloud notebook using the Leap service to solve an optimization problem. We can visualize a simple example of this using the Network X Python package. It's used to study the structure of complex networks. After importing it, we can create a five-node star graph in a single line. The minimum set of vertices that touch all edges is node zero. That's the solution to this simple problem. But the general problem of finding a, such a set is NP-hard. We'll first solve this problem on a CPU since for a small number of variables, it's possible to compute classically in a relatively short time. Then we'll do it on the QPU. To solve it on the CPU, we'll initialize a sampler using the exact solver module of the official DiMod API. A solver is a resource that runs a problem, and samplers are processes that sample from low energy states of a problem's objective function, which is a mathematical expression of the energy of a system. The sampler we've initialized returns a binary quadratic model's value for every possible assignment of variable values. This is a collection of binary valued variables that are variables that can be assigned to values like negative one and one with associated linear and quadratic biases. A BQM sampler samples from low energy states in one of the default models defined by D-Wave in the API and returns an iterable of samples in order of increasing energy. This helps for formulate optimization problems. Then we can use the Wave Networks library to produce a BQM for our graph and solve it on our select sampler. We're not explicitly creating the BQM, it's abstracted by the Ocean tool. So given the problem graph, it returns a solution to a BQM that it creates internally. 
Now, to solve it on a quantum processor, we can use a D-Wave sampler and a new addition, the embedding composite. This maps unstructured problems to the graph structure of the selected sampler via a process called minor embedding. Our problem star graph must be mapped to the QPU's numerically indexed qubits. We'll see that it creates a new graph and solves it on the QPU. We can know that this solution isn't unique. In fact, there are multiple valid solutions. When we give our algorithm a much larger graph that consists of real-world data, it will perform the same tasks and we can use the output as a guide as to where exactly we should place traffic monitoring equipment. We now know the least amount of equipment we need to buy to monitor the entire network. A lot to take in all at once, I know, but it's a very exciting field. There are three things to remember from this video. D-Wave's Leap is the first cloud-based quantum application environment that gives developers real-time access to a live quantum computer. Quantum computing uses three key features from quantum mechanics to perform computations, including superposition, entanglement, and tunneling. And we can solve the minimum vertex problem for a graph much faster using a quantum machine than a classical one. Also, coding challenge for the week. Create a simple application using Leap that solves the problem. I'll give a shout out next week to the top two entries and a special prize for number one. I'm looking for great documentation and an interesting use case. Good luck, wizards. Please subscribe for more programming videos. And for now, I've got to stop interfering. So thanks for watching.